Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In our lecture series, section 4.2, we reach finally the main topic for this chapter, the idea of polynomial functions. A polynomial function is a function of the form f of x equals a sub n x of n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus a sub, you know, the next terms all the way down to a 1x plus a sub 0 here. And so really what we want to think of is a polynomial is just going to be a collection of monomial functions. So we talked about power functions in the previous video with a special emphasis on monomials. Monomial functions being those of the form y equals a times x to the n for some power of x right there. And so the word monomial itself uh, really does mean one nomial. The nomial just here just means name. Um, mono just means there's one term as opposed to like a polynomial for which there are many terms in the collection there. So we combine together all these different monomials and we form polynomials. The numbers in front of the x is there because you'll have like the zero power of x, x to the first, x squared, x cubed. These numbers right here we call the coefficients of the polynomial. And these are going to be real numbers in our consideration here. The, let's see, the, the biggest term that shows up in this sum, that is the power of x that has that the, the largest power of x, this is commonly referred to as the leading term. The coefficient of the leading term, we call it the leading coefficient. The exponent of the leading term, we call this the degree of the polynomial. And one thing we're going to see very quickly in this lecture is that of all the terms in a polynomial, the leading term is the most important term. Uh, also, it's another, another term in the polynomial that plays some role is going to be the constant term over here. Uh, constant term because it doesn't have uh, any variable x whatsoever. The constant term, of course, is going to determine the y-intercept of the graph. Uh, the x to the first power we often refer to as the linear term. x to the second power we might call the quadratic term. x to the third we might call the cubic term. And those are some names we've used for polynomials. The linear functions we've studied in the past, these are examples of degree one polynomials. The quadratic functions we studied in the previous chapter are what we call degree two polynomials. Uh, a constant function is just a degree zero polynomial because it only has a constant term. Uh, in, this, in, this, uh, ch in this chapter, we'll of course study higher degree polynomials, right? So a degree three polynomial, we might call that a cubic polynomial. Degree four, known as a quartic. Degree five, we might call this one a quintic. And we could keep on going with vocabulary here, but we're not going to do much more of that. Uh, but the polynomial is just a function, which is a collection of all these different monomials. If there's only one term in a polynomial, we could call that a monomial. If there's two terms in the polynomial, we might call it a binomial, uh, being like a bicycle, there's two. If there's three terms in the polynomial, we would often call that a trinomial, kind of like a tricycle. If there's more terms than that. Again, there's vocabulary we could introduce, but we probably aren't going to do it at that uh, for that. Um, one thing that I can also mention about polynomials here is that the, by the domain convention, uh, the domain convention told us originally that we want the domain to be as big as possible and we'll accept all real numbers for which the operations in play lead to well-defined real numbers. When it comes to a polynomial, the operations are going to be addition and subtraction. You're going to have exponents, which mean multiplication. You're going to have coefficients, which also mean multiplication. So when computing polynomials, you only need addition, subtraction, multiplication. There is no restriction on those operations whatsoever. So the domain of every single polynomial ever crafted is going to be negative infinity to infinity. Finding the range is a little bit more difficult, uh, and that's a topic we will address later in this lecture.